Hey guys, it's D-Bird here giving y'all Star vs. The Forces of Evil review. Now, I just caught up on the show and I'm going to review Bon Bon, the birthday clown. Now, the opening for this episode was dark with, uh, it takes place back when Echo Creek is just founded. Like 14 people populate the place, I believe, 14, 15, I believe, and Bon Bon is um, doing a birthday for the mayor and he blows out the candles and they come back and they call witchcraft. And I found out I found that interesting that they keep calling they call out witchcraft back then and it was so long ago that things they don't understand is witchcraft. And he told them it's just a trick of the candle that it keeps coming back up because it's a trick candle and the trick candle blows up in Bon Bon's face and that sends him in a full body cast to the hospital and he dies, setting a dark tone for the whole episode. But he tells the mayor that he will return in a hundred years uh in a hundred years after his death on his death day so uh when we go to present day star and jenna are gonna go and resurrect bon bon and see if the ghost comes if his ghost comes back to the real world and we find out that uh they're having a school dance on the same day and marco and jackie are gonna go jackie asked out marco to the dance and i found that was very interesting uh Mar jackie is a very straightforward character and knows what she wants and asked Marco out flipping the norm on her head of in reality the guy asking the girl to the dance so going into a uh when Marco was coming down the stairs for the dance that we see that the camera was like they had the camera focused on different characters in the house because it was Marco Star Jackie Jenna and uh Marco's parents in the house and they focus on each character. Jenny, Jenna didn't seem like she cared. Um, Jackie, uh, this part was interesting to me that Jackie, when he, she was eyeing Marco, because he was looking all suave and whatnot, Star looked like she was getting a little uh, jealous in that scene. And she wasn't, when uh, Mr. Diaz asked um, Star to take a picture of Jackie and um, Marco, she didn't seem too sure, like she didn't like it. Uh, but then going on, Jackie and Marco went to the dance and Jackie and Marco was like scoping out the scene. Some people were eating, some people were on the side, normal dance. Uh, but they ultimately found that it was kind of lame. A funny part in there, it was the couple and he was putting, uh, the flowers on his date and, or on his girlfriend. And she was like, they're crooked and slapped him. That was hilarious. I thought that was funny. I was not expecting that to make it into an episode like this, but that was funny. So Jackie's like, this place is lame. Marco, you want to go on a date with me right now? And ditch, uh, pretty much ditch the uh, dance. And Marco's like, yeah, sure, why not? And he's like, mm -hmm. she's a very laid back, straightforward character. And that's what I like about her character because it contrasts Marco so much. And well, what they say, opposite of the track, she's straight, straightforward, laid back. Marco's uptight, nervous all the time around her. And it's a nice mix of characters. And also, before I go further, when she comes to Marco's house uh, to pick him up so they can go to the dance together, that's just another way of like flipping the norm on the head. I see uh, the creator, she's just flipping norms on the head of re actual reality because all I've done pretty much all my life is go ask the girl out, go to the house, pick them up, um, talk to their family and whatnot. But Jackie went to Marco's house to pick him up and I thought that was, uh, that was pretty good. I'll, uh, that the show is showing different perspective on how things could be. I'm pretty sure people do that in real life. It just never happened in my personal experience. So uh, they ditch the dance. They go on a date. And you find out that Jackie likes Marco because he, uh, every time he fails, and uh, he's always, when he fails ethically, that he always gets back up. Uh, she relates to the skateboard. He gets back up and uh, keeps going and tries again. And I found it interesting that she remembers all the times that Marco has messed up with her, like uh, when they're in preschool, like he, he puked on her and then all the recent times, like with the little talking head and things like that. And I felt that was that was good. They're like these characters are actually going somewhere after uh, Marco has been like lo loving Jackie ever since freaking first season. So these characters are actually getting development with each other. And so. Jackie is going to teach Marco how to skateboard. We find out that she keeps a skateboard on her all the time, uh, always prepared to skateboard. Uh, she keeps it underneath her dress. 
for this episode and has two helmets and teaches Marco how to uh how to not dance how to skateboard and she's like do you trust me and like pretty much flipping the norm like do you trust me I got you and things like that and then they have a touchy moment and I was like mm, my boy Marco finally had to give I had to had to give him the clap because this boy finally got the kiss from like his crush and everything and they were hitting it off and they kissed and everything I was like wow that's really good for the character to develop like that and then uh he saw the blood moon when they kissed now i don't know if the blood moon is signifying that he can't be happy with jackie because his soul is entangled with stars or that stars in trouble because at this point she's fighting ludo so the blood moon is a question mark to me and i'm pretty sure they're gonna explain it more in season three when that comes out so i'm waiting i'm happy to wait for that answer because that was a good little scene they had with the blood moon in uh marco when him and jackie kissed that he looked up and the blood moon was there so uh going back to the stars her and jenna are going to go resurrect the crown and glossary tags along tags along and when he does uh they're talking and whatnot and for some reason jenna is obsessed with summoning things like creatures and things like that and i i don't understand why i feel like that's just her personality but i feel like there's something more to her character why she wants to keep summoning things because that's her thing uh getting so far that she likes to summon things and star is still down that she's not going to dance with uh marco and <clears throat> she keeps bringing it up when they're trying to summon bonbon bon. and uh, she even uses calypso's magic to spy on them the all-seeing eye or something glossary uh, warns her not to use it uh, because he's asleep at this point and but she uses it anyway and when she uses the spell to spy on marco and jackie at that point they're riding the skateboard and she gets a feel a little feeling of jealousy and the skateboard will explode and they fall off now i see that calypso's magic is working on emotions like strong emotions of like jealousy and hate like that and when you feel that using when you feel that type of way using the magic it twists the spell making uh things in the real world uh like the magic the spell to twist and uh, corrupt and stuff like that and i felt that was interesting because we see that again when she's fighting ludo and she's using a spell to suck him uh, suck him up into a portal and take his butt back wherever he came from and the spell gets flipped on her when jackie and marco ride up on a skateboard and she sees them together and she almost gets sucked into her own spell so it seems like uh calypso's uh calypso magic is uh, once you dive into it that you just uh, it keeps keeps going until you resolve the problem or something like that you have to control your feelings and stuff like that and so star is going to have to confront marco about the way she feels but that she's not a type that she's not the character her character doesn't really confront she kind of runs from a problem so it's going to probably get worse before it gets better a lot worse before it gets better and then she loses the fight with ludo because he comes and attacks star and he she loses the fight because the spell gets turned on her and ludo escapes with glossaric and the spell book and this devastates star because she pretty much lost everything and then she's also feeling that she's losing marco to jackie and she's feeling like she her social life is being destroyed at this point and in the episode bonbon bon did come back but he got sucked up into the portal that star made so i don't know if he's gonna come back i wonder if he is later on in the episode and that he's just stuck in this other dimension as a ghost um but star is devastated is crying and whatnot and i felt like man that sucks uh, she she's feeling real down at this point in uh in the series and i can't wait for season three to start up because ludo gets the book and glossary and then at the end of the episode opens it and it seems like he's going to try to find a spell or trying to find how to control this wand that he had, well the other part of the star that he has that he made this makeshift wand out of and then I had a question at the end of this episode. So they mentioned that there are rats 
a lot in this episode at the beginning, in the middle, and then you find out that Ludo is spying on them with the rats. But Glossaric uh, is using a page out of the book and he burns it. And he's, he asked Star, are you going to use this page? And he's like, oh, there's a drawing of a rat on it or something like that. And he, I don't know if this was like all foreshadowing or because he burns the page. Because in the episode um, by the book, he find, he find you find out that he kind of like kind of sees the future somewhat. And I'm wondering if he saw the future that he's going to be taken by uh, Ludo. So he burns the page, not allowing Ludo to get whatever information was on it because he already knew he was going to get stolen. I feel like that's a that could be possible. Now, this is not I don't have no like evidence besides whatever they had on the show. This is just a little fan fan theory I came up with. And I feel like that was interesting that he might be able to see the future. I already knew that he's going to be taken and burn some information so Ludo can get it. And. But that's it for the review, and uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr to discuss different things, or you can leave your comments in the section below.